AEW Grand Slam in my backyard, Queens, New York, and Flushing. This is a, you know, I, I had such FOMO from missing out of All Out. Uh, you know, I, I really get fear of missing out really bad whenever there's a big event. Oh, everybody was out there. Obviously, my hip is still not great, and I didn't want to do the trip. But, you know, I, I kind of don't feel it now that I'm getting this show. AW Dynamite from Arthur Ashe Stadium in Queens, New York, right next to City Field, Flushing Meadow Park. Look at this lineup. Ring of Honor world champion Claudio versus Chris Jericho. AEW All-Atlantic champion, Pac versus Orange Cassidy. You got an AEW World Tag t Tag Championship, Swerve in Our Glory versus The Acclaimed. That building is going to explode. It, that roof is very soft, okay? It's not, it's like, it's, 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 a, it's a cloth roof. There's going to be a hole in that roof from people losing their minds for The Acclaimed. Interim AEW Women's Championship, Tony Storm, Britt Baker, Serena Deep, and Athena, and... The AEW World Championship match culminates. The tournament culminates at AEW Grand Slam, and you're going to get John Moxley and Brian Danielson. Also, uh, Rampage looks unbelievable as well. Uh, we'll talk about Rampage there. I want to get your opinion on this, Joel. You know, they're not going to have 20,000 people in that building. I think you're going to have closer to 13. They're putting a stage, it seems like, this year, as far as I could tell in the mapping. You know, 13,000 people is not a bad number. Uh, I, I, this looks like it's a, it's a mega show. What are you looking forward to? Looking forward to a lot of it. Uh, I was at Grand Slam last year in New York, made the trip and I got, you were, to we hung out. out. Yeah. We got to go out and, and have a couple of drinks and just enjoy ourselves while uh, we didn't talk wrestling. And then we did a little bit, but that's just what we do. Uh, I'm excited for the show. I mean, listen, you've got a wonderful presumed main event with Moxley and Danielson. That's going to be a banger. You've got a huge moment with the World Tag Team Championships, potentially. Uh, I have my gripes about the World, the Ring of Honor World Championship match, but we can always talk about that later. And uh, even, again, Rampage looks great. It's going to be a lot about how they structure the night because last year when we were there, the show went from like 7 p.m. Eastern until midnight. And I don't know about you, but I was exhausted when I left and I got a real lucky ride back from a friend instead of taking public transit. That was yeah, a whole know, lot uh, of can of worms. You know what I did? I left at like 9.15. <laughs> I, I, had to, I had a big meeting that next day that I did nothing for. And I, I had like a panic attack in the middle. You were there. And I was like, I got to go remember. home, guys. I'll see you later. I was home. Denise was on the air. So this has to be like 10 o'clock, right? She went on after. And I was like, hey, you want to scoop? And I think I told her something about the. I think I was like, hey, the TBS, they're going to do something called the TBS title. I, it took me like 10 minutes to get home, which was perfect. But... I don't plan on being there till midnight. I don't plan on having to deal with the Long Island Railroad. I don't plan on dealing with the parking lot. I'm going to give you guys the best piece of advice I could ever give anybody. Okay. This is coming from someone that has experienced that area. This is someone that dealt with the, the, the comments, uh, hours and hours of the show. People were stranded. They didn't understand where they were going, how they were going there. Do yourself a favor, plan all your travel. Don't expect to walk out of that building. It, there's nothing around it, okay? There's no, there's no food around. There's no restaurants around. You got you to gotta get out of that area. The, that, it's landlocked in litigation and politics, that entire section. There's nothing around there. So if you're leaving at like 12 o'clock in the morning, don't expect downtown Flushing to have a lot going on. Don't expect much to happen. You're not in Manhattan. So plan ahead. If you're going, I know there was a little bit of a culture shock also for the hotels. A lot of people flew in for that show and they stayed in Flushing and they didn't know, they didn't understand. Listen, Flushing is our Chinatown in Queens. Okay. It, it's, it's very diverse. It's very different. You're not in Manhattan. Uh, you'll get some great dumpling spots. You want some great Korean chicken. You got it over there. You want some great sushi. You got it over there. You want some great Greek food. You got it, but you, you got to plan ahead. Don't think 11 o'clock things are open. Also, if you want to have a good time, if you want to you want to hang out somewhere quiet, nice, go to Bayside first. Take the train from Bayside to Arthur Ashe, six minutes, and you'll you'll feel so much better. And leave your car in Bayside. I'm telling you, I'm saving your life here. I'm saving aggravation. 
And that's my PSA. I had to do it. Everybody's like, give me your PSA. I, I, listen, man, I think this is awesome. I think it's a very unique show. I think it's really cool that they put this show on in a building that has no other events other than tennis. Ever. Historically. AEW was the first one that is not associated with the tennis association, with the USTA to run, run in that building. Very cool stuff. But let's end the show a little earlier. Yeah. There are ways yeah. to do it, too. There, there are, are ways to do it. Yeah, don't do an elevation taping. Instead, you know, I've seen a lot of people pitch the idea of taping the first hour of Rampage, you know, an hour before you go live for, for Dynamite, and then do the second hour of Rampage, which whatever matches you have, you just structure it well, go into your second hour of Rampage, tape it there. You're done by 11 p.m. Eastern, 11.30, let's say. You don't need to tape the, no. the two shows one after the other. It, and no, the wait there's... is so long between Dynamite and Rampage. Like, it's 25, 30 minutes that just, they, there's not a lot going on. Yeah. So on Rampage, you're going to have Samoa Joe and Wardlow versus Tony Nese and Josh Woods. Hook and Action Bronze in Flushing Zone. Uh, who are they facing? Uh, 2.0. Matt 2.0, Menard there you go. Yeah, yeah, Angela yeah. Parker. Matt Menard and uh, Angela Parker. No DQ match, Sting. Darby Allen versus Buddy Matthews and Brody King. Jungle Boy versus Ray Phoenix. Ricky Starks and Powerhouse Hobbs. Eddie Kingston, Sammy Guevara. TBS champion Jade Cargill and Diamante. And... The Golden Ticket Battle Royal for a shot against the AEW World Champion, Hangman Page, Penta, Jay Lethal, Lance Archer announced so far. So you have him win this. We know MJF has the uh, the chip. So now you have two people lined up for title shots later down the line. You're going to have... I, I'm very curious what they do with Moxley and, and Danielson because I want to see Danielson win. I want Danielson to get the title. I know a lot of people think it should be Moxley. It will be Moxley. I think it should be Danielson. What do you think? I think Danielson wins. And talking about next in line, now MJF had put in his promo that he's got a poker chip that he can cash in at any time for a world title shot. But is it like the money in the bank? There's no, there's, no one has set that in stone. It's never been set in stone. Everyone has, originally they've all just like set their shot, Tony called the shot, whatever it is. I think MJF is going to say, my contract allowed me to call my shot whenever I wanted, no questions asked. And yeah, it's similar to Money in the Bank. But guess what? There are a lot of things in wrestling that are similar to each other when you go sure. you know, promotion to promotion. Yeah, so I, I just don't know the thing. rules. Have they, have they set what the rules are? No. no okay. it, there are no rules in this case, at least as far as I've seen, nothing. And you have yeah, MJF I, I, come out. You. I'm moment. psyched for that. I really am. And I want to, like, I will stay till the end because I want to see that main event. I'm a big Danielson fan. I, I think anybody that knows the type of wrestling I'm into is that kind of style, right? I'm not as is much of a high flyer. Event, Sorry, is that the or, main event? Oh, are you saying, or what should it be? What's your other option? You, Jericho and Claudia? No, the World Tag Team Championships. That's the moment. Do you I know, claim but in their hometown? Ah, man, I don't know. I, you know what? That's a big feel. That good is a moment. big. That is a great feel good moment for them, and I know everybody there is going to be psyched for them. And we saw the changeover at the last pay per view. Uh, you know, we we got. Th I mean, this is every match looks great here, right? But I mean, the big three are Claudio, and then Claudio and Jericho. You know, Ring of Honor. I, I don't know what they're doing right now with this. I don't think anybody does. I think Tony is attempting to do something really cool with it, and he's not. Uh, somebody mentioned to me that. You know, if Tony wanted a bad deal, he could have gotten it for them, for Ring of Honor. And, and this was said in, in passing like a month and a half ago to me. And I believe that. I think if Tony wanted to get them on TV or get them any kind of positioning, he could have just done a bad deal or something that he doesn't really necessarily think is a great deal to get it on TV. But, you know, if you have Claudio and Jericho in this, now Chris Jericho wins the Ring of Honor title. You've added something more to this, a little something more. I think Chris Jericho right now is in a renaissance period in his career. He's had some tremendous matches. Uh, he's really stepped up. A lot of that anti-Chris Jericho stuff when he was a little heavier and a lot of people thought he was there for the money and he wasn't really putting in the effort. Uh, I think a lot of that has dissipated when they saw how much he cares about this company and how, how much he stepped up to help. I, I, I don't think people give him an, enough credit for that. However, should he be Claudio? No. <laughs> you say no. I say yes. I say do it. Do it. Do it. I get it. I, 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 have, I have a gripe with how we got to this, and I know Me people too. in the chat are going to say, agree with you. Ring of Honor World Championship is an open contract. Anyone can take it. Well, Chris Jericho just lost 
a string of matches for a world championship shot. Like he just lost a match for a world championship. Listen, Why none of that is canon. Evaluated? None of that is canon. <laughs> Alternate <laughs> universe planning. None yes, of that is canon because this wasn't supposed to happen. Right. But at the same time, there's a larger story going on with Daniel Garcia, the, the BCC and Chris Jericho. Now there's an opportunity here to have Daniel Garcia come out during the match. Let's say Jericho is trying to sully the honor of ring of honor and the championship. And you have Daniel Garcia come out and be like, no, that's not how you win a world championship, especially the ring of honor title. Claudio wins. And then Claudio shakes Danny Garcia's hand. And that's two members of BCC that have shaken Danny Garcia's hand. And this time it's a guy who's also holding a ring of honor championship. That's yeah. akin to the one he's holding. I'm into that. I'm into that. 